But I tell you something. Who are the people who are most deserving of your forgiveness? That's a question. I told you when you forgive people, you are helping yourself, not them. Did you hear that? When you forgive people, you are helping yourself, not them. I forgave this man. I don't want to deal with him anymore. Salamu alaikum wa alaikum as salam. That's where it stops. Alhamdulillah, that's the minimum. But I've forgiven him. It's okay. I don't, I, I walk, I'm a happy man. I concentrate on life. Someone owes you 20,000 US dollars. Okay, that's a big figure. Very big figure. You tried for one year, you tried for two years. You tried for three years, you started becoming sick and ill. And you have hope in your heart that you are going to get it back one day. And his financial condition is becoming worse and worse. You might want to. There are two things you can do. If you are wealthy, you can write it off. That's all. It's gone. And Allah will provide you more because Allah sees that you made some life easy. For a person who is struggling, I will make life easy for you. And I will make your hereafter easy for you too. مَن نَفَّسَ عَمْ مُسْلِمٍ كُرْبَةً مِنْ كُرَ بِالدُّنْيَا نَفَّسَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ كُرْبَةً مِنْ كُرَ بِيَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةً And in another narration, فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْأُخْرَى Whoever alleviates the struggle or whoever overlooks or helps in the struggle of a fellow believer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I will help that person on the day of judgment. And in one narration, I will alleviate the suffering of that person in this world and the next. So you want to alleviate your own suffering? Carry on. Allah will provide more for you. Inna Allah huwa razzaq dhul quwwatil mateen. Allah is the owner of sustenance. Allah is ar razzaq Allah is the one who provides. He will provide for you. Don't worry. So one thing is to forgive. But sometimes you need the money. You are not in a position to actually forgive. But you don't have to make it your main aim in life where you are walking. Everyone you talk to, the topic is someone owes you 20,000. Everyone you go to, you're talking about the same thing. You don't have to do that. You are stressing yourself. You try. You employ whatever methods you have to in terms of legal methods. And you want your wealth back and so on. But you need to understand. Listen, help yourself by not making it your main aim in life. Work on something else. While you are concentrating on this thing, you are losing so many business opportunities. Your mind is struggling. You, it affects you. It affects everyone around you. When you have held grudges and you have not forgiven people, it starts affecting your relationship with your family members because you are upset. You come home, your child is saying, Daddy, Daddy, or Mommy. You say, keep quiet, sit down. Hey, they are supposed to be talking to you. Your, someone did something wrong to you. Now you are doing something wrong to your children. As a result, you don't realize it's affected your character. So do your character a favor by forgiving them. Do your children a favor by forgiving them. You will smile at home once again instead of frowning. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. So you forgive, there is so much of benefit. But who is the person who is most deserving or the people who are most deserving of your forgiveness? Who do you think they are? Who do you think they are? Your family members and those who are the closest in relation to you. They are the ones who deserve your forgiveness first. They were placed close to you to test you. That's all. Allah chose them as your relatives. Today, your husband does one mistake. The marriage is over. Forget about everything else. Your car has a small dent. The car is gone. It's not a write-off. That's not what you do. You send it to the panel beaters. You repair the car. You bring it back. The old faithful, you know. Your wife made one mistake. What happened? Divorce. What was the reason? Ah, there are 20,000 other girls running behind me. That's not the right way of doing things. They are probably running behind your money. The minute the rupiah drops, they also drop. Possible. May Allah forgive us. You need to work on the relationships you have. Someone commits a mistake, forgive them. T today's advice to married people is when the spouse makes a mistake, leave him, 
Go away. Divorce. File for divorce. What happened? Oh, something minor. Something major. So what? But as a believing female, a believing male, when your spouse has done something wrong, you need to sit and seek Allah's forgiveness to begin with. Both of you. Ask Allah's forgiveness. When He forgives you and your slate is clean, you will be able to think properly. When you yourself have committed so many sins and you are not with a clean slate between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how do you expect to think in the correct manner? Can you? The answer is no, you cannot. So if you seek Allah's forgiveness to start off with before you even retaliate and respond, you will be guided by Allah. Calm down. It's a very big matter. Calm down. And then see what they are saying. If they show a speck of remorse, you need to extend your hand, the hand of mercy. Yes, if there's no remorse whatsoever, you might want to deal with it differently. But if there is a speck of remorse, who from amongst us does not make mistakes? If that was the case, every one of us, without exception, would be divorced. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. So save your marriage. Help your children by forgiving your spouse. One narration speaks about those who work for us. The people who work for us, the helping hands. There is a narration in Al-Fadail which speaks about forgiving them so many times in one day. How many times should I forgive them? 70 times in the whole day. 70 times a day. Those who work for me. Then my spouse, 700 times a day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. If those who work for you deserve that you forgive them so many times a day, overlook. What about those whom you live with? Remember, your spouse will never be able to be exactly like you, 100% thinking like you, liking the things you like, disliking the things you dislike. That won't happen. We are not robots. We are human beings with real hearts. So you need to appreciate one another and the diversity in one another by forgiving, by overlooking, by discussing, by communicating. That's how you will lead a beautiful life. You will never be able to lead a beautiful life if you hold things. And one day, you take out the book. Every day in the evening you write. Poor wife thinks that you are writing how much money you're making. And you keep the book private. The book is hidden. Every night you're writing. Don't look at this book. Locked. Halas. One day when something happens, the soup that she was making, preparing for you perhaps, overboiled. And it messed the stove. And there was a smell that gave you a headache. That's it. Now you take out the book. Look, I've been writing all the things you've been doing. I want to show you what you've done. One, two. My brother, that's your spouse. What did you need to write everything from the back for? Let go. Let go of it. Subhanallah. Allah will let go of you on the day of judgment if you were caught doing the wrong thing. It's very, very possible that Allah will do that for you. But with your own spouse, someone whom you took into your relationship, the most intimate relationship that there could be, with the name of Allah, you took that person and you hold every droplet of what they did against them. You have a sickness of doubt against your husband, against your wife. Every small call, every small movement, every movement of the eye, every time they leave the house, that's it. He's committing sin. She's committing sin. If that's your attitude, trust me, you will never be able to lead a life. It's not going to happen. That's not what you do. Then a person comes and says, look what I've been writing all along. What did you write it for? It goes to show that your intention from the beginning was dirty. It was very dirty. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. When you forgive your spouse, you have helped yourself build a powerful relation. 
you learn to love one another. And when you have been forgiven by a spouse, do not abuse it. They are not ghafoor rahim They are not most forgiving, most merciful. They might be able to forgive you once, if you are lucky twice. In a lot of cases, it does not extend to a third time. They are human beings. But still, we are taught to forgive as many times as we can. But when we have been forgiven, don't look at it as a weakness. It's not a weakness. Many people think, you know what? Where is she going to go? No way. I'm giving her the life. I'm giving her everything. Wallahi, Allah will catch you. Allah will catch you. People think, I can do what I want. This woman here, I'm married to her. Where is she going to go? She's got five children with me. And I've lived with her for how many years? She can't do anything. She's got no one to go to. Her brothers and sisters are married. Her father and mother have passed away and so on. Now, it's okay what I do to her. Be careful. She might forgive you. You don't know that that forgiveness is not a weakness. It's actually a strength. The more she forgives you, the happier a life between her and Allah she will lead. And guess what? The fact that she has forgiven you does not necessarily mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you. It doesn't mean Allah is happy. He's watching. He knows. The record is taken. He can see. So therefore, please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by trying your best not to